Hello everyone, it is your host, your friend, your boy, Jet Black, the one and only, here with another exciting video. And in this video, I'm going to be playing some AI Dungeon 2. Some AI Dungeon 2. I hope you guys are excited. This is another fan-requested scenario. If you would like to give me a scenario or a prompt for me to play in these AI Dungeon 2 videos, feel free to leave a link to a safe-for-work scenario with a defined goal in the comment section below or on our Discord. I love it when you guys submit scenarios. They can be scenarios that you make yourself, or they can be scenarios that you find on the AI Dungeon 2 website that you think are cool. They could even be like a friend scenario. Uh, regardless, I love getting your submissions because it shows me that you're interested in seeing more AI Dungeon 2 videos and that you have an idea of what kind of scenario you want me to play. Now, the scenario that I was submitted, I actually edited down a little bit um, because a lot of it was like world info stuff. So you guys may notice that the like prompt is like fairly short, but don't worry, all the additional details have been put into the world info. Um, there's one fan in particular who gave me this prompt. Uh, shout out to the Discord. Um, who is really into Overlord, which is like an anime that I personally don't care for, but I still don't mind doing the prompts. So if you guys are like, who are all these characters and what are their names and stuff like that, a lot of that stuff is in the world info, um, and a lot of that I don't even really know too much about myself because I don't watch Overlord. But regardless, this is going to be fun. My goal is within 30 minutes, can I catch the bounty? Because in this I'm playing as a bounty hunter. So let's see how that goes. I'm going to start the 30 minute timer and let's hop right into the adventure. So the timer started and the recording has started. So let's jump on in. You are Sebastian. You have been sent by Eins Ol' Gown to collect a bounty for him. You are accompanied by Chaltier Bloodfallen. Chaltier has, a, Chaltier has the wanted poster for the bounty that you're supposed to collect. The two of you set off on your journey. The Bounty Hunter Guild will pay you a lot more than what they would normally charge for this sort of job. You wonder if it's worth going through with this mission, but then again, why not? So now I'm going to um, ask Shaltair what are the powers and weaknesses of the target of today's Bounty Hunt. So I want to get a good idea of like, you know, who are we after? Like, what are their powers? Uh, what are they weak against? Oh, uh, yes, I remember now. It was a beautiful young woman named, uh, named Yvette Tiamat. She had red hair and blue eyes. Her name was written across her chest in blood. Oh, so she's dead? I like how it's like, oh, so she's dead. I'm going to get rid of the oh, so she's dead. She could just have her name written across her chest in blood for some reason at all times. Let's see, um, I'm going to say, I know the name and appearance of our bounty target. I want to know what Yvette's powers and weaknesses are. Um, but I'm glad that we have, like, a name and an appearance description for Yvette, because uh, that means that we could get fan art. If you guys want to draw Yvette Tiamat, she's a beautiful young woman with red hair and blue eyes that has her name written in blood across her chest. Uh, Shaltair smiles. This pleases her. Ah, uh, yes. You know I was the last person who spoke to before she fled the Empire. Oh, who she spoke to before she fled the Empire. I remember our conversation vividly. Shall we go over it together? Uh, Sheltier, you're giving me too many details. I don't need... Ooh, I added too many E's. I don't need to know your whole conversation with Yvette. Tell me Yvette's powers and weaknesses. You are trying to get Shaltier to just tell you what Yvette's powers and weaknesses are. You don't want to hear about the entire conversation that Yvette 
and Shaltair had before Yvette fled from the Empire. My apologies. Her powers are that of necromancy. She can raise and control the dead. She is vulnerable to consecrated silver weapons. That's about as far as I know. Hmm. Interesting. So I'm going to get rid of the part where it had me, like, ask a follow-up question. And I'm going to say... Hmm. Well, actually, I guess I'm not going to really say anything. I'm going to go to the nearest blacksmith and ask if they have any consecrated silver weapons for sale. You ask the black that you ask the blacksmith if he has any consecrated silver weapons for sale. The blacksmith laughs. I don't deal in that sort of thing. If you want something like that, you'll have to go to the Temple of Fell or maybe the Church of Jokin. Okay. Cool. You thank the blacksmith for the information, and you head to the Temple of Fell in search of consecrated silver weapons. Let's see. You head to the Temple of Fell. The priests of Fell don't deal in consecrated silver weapons. They only sell normal ones. They are pretty angry that you have come to them demanding consecrated silver weapons because you have interrupted their business in selling and buying normal steel weapons. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to... Apologize for inconveniencing the priest of Fell and travel to the church of Jokim in search of consecrated silver weapons. You travel to the Church of Jokim. The priest is happy to sell you a silver dagger, but it is not consecrated and it doesn't come with a sheath. You buy one of their normal sheaths and put the silver dagger in it. You ask the Church of Jokim if they can consecrate your silver dagger. The priest tells you that Jokim has blessed all of the weapons and armor in the church, so by placing your dagger in here, it will become consecrated. You place the silver dagger into the church. It is gone for one hour. Okay, cool. You retrieve your silver dagger once it is finished being consecrated and head out with Shaltair to hunt down Yvette on the outskirts of the Empire. Okay, so let's see. So we know that she can, like, raise the dead, 
and we know that she's weak to consecrated silver weapons, and we have a consecrated silver weapon. You and Chaltair leave the city. I think I know where she is, Chaltair says confidently. You and she head to the forest outside of the Empire. So you're sure she's in the forest, you ask? Let's see, um, we can let it ride. Do, 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 Yes, I'm sure she's in the forest. She probably, that, she's probably making her home somewhere around here. Now, come on, we have to search for her, Shaltair. Oh, we have to search for her. Shaltair leads you deeper into the woods. You look around for any sign of Yvette. You are also looking out for any nearby graveyards. You imagine that Yvette would likely hide away somewhere nearby a burial ground. That way, she could easily use her powers to summon the undead at will. I'm pretty sure graveyard's one word, so I don't know why I split it up like that. Shaltair leads you through the forest. You look around and take in the sights. There are various plants off to the sides that you'd never seen before, and the trees are so big that ten men could dangle off the top branches and they wouldn't touch. Okay, so we're just in a forest, but so far I don't see any signs of Yvette. Hmm. We need to fast track this. I'm going to attempt to climb a tree and use the tree as a vantage point to easily spot where Yvette is hiding in the forest. You find a tall tree and start to climb it. You manage to get up about 15 feet in the air before you find a good resting spot. The finish point lets you easily see all of the forest. There's nothing here. Hmm. Let's see. You call down to Chantaire and tell her... Wait, 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 wait. You begin to think that maybe Yvette isn't hiding in the forest and is instead hiding above the forest. You look around for any tree houses that Yvette may have set up to hide away in. Your eye catches something that looks like a broken tree house. Chaltier, look over there. It's a tree house. A broken down old thing like that? There's no way Yvette would hide out in a place like that, Chaltier laughs. Hmm. I'm going to say, I wouldn't be so sure. People who don't want to be found like to hide in unsuspecting places. Yvette is wanted, so surely she doesn't want to be found. We should go check out that treehouse. I don't see why we should. 
That treehouse looks dangerous and is falling apart anyway. I think it would be best if we just moved on and searched elsewhere. Shaltair looks at you expectantly, hoping that you'll leave the area. Hmm. So here's what I'm going to do. You are curious why Shaltair is so against checking out the treehouse. You don't want to leave the forest without first checking to make sure that Yvette isn't hiding away in the treehouse. You decide to go to the treehouse to look for Yvette. Excuse me. I noticed that I'm like sometimes saying treehouse as one word and sometimes saying it as two words. No, I want to check it out, you state. Shaltair looks at you with a worried expression on her face. She knows you are determined to go, so she reluctantly agrees. Okay? You investigate the treehouse. You make sure to be very cautious and attentive. You have your hand on your dagger just in case you need to quickly draw it at a moment's notice. You smell the air to check for the stench of blood and corpses. You know that Yvette wears blood on her chest and that she is a necromancer. So the scent of blood or corpses would be a good sign that Yvette is nearby. After checking the top of the broken treehouse, you find that it is in good repair. There are no visible signs of blood or corpses inside, just old blankets, pillows, and a few lanterns. Hmm. Let's see. There's no signs of blood and corpses, but there are signs that someone's been living here. That actually is very curious. You look around for strands of red hair on the blankets and pillows. Yvette has red hair, so if she's been living in this treehouse, then she likely would have shed hair in her living space at some point. You look around and find a few hairs on the blankets and pillows. They look to be the same color as Yvette's hair, that red that borders on brown. You take note of this finding. Yvette has been here. There are red hairs on the pillows. Let's see. I don't smell blood, so I don't think Yvette is home. We should hide inside of the treehouse and wait for Yvette to return. When she returns, we can ambush her and kill her using the consecrated silver dagger. 
You want to ambush your vet? Of course, she's a dangerous vampire and we need to kill her. Do you have a better idea? Shaltier thinks for a moment and then shakes her head, agreeing with you. Okay, cool. You hide in the treehouse and wait. Well, I guess you should hide in the shadows of the treehouse and wait for Yvette to return home. Your goal is to ambush Yvette and to kill her with your consecrated silver dagger as soon as she enters the treehouse. Shelter air and you hide on the second floor of the treehouse. You wait patiently in the shadows for your vet to return. Time passes. Half an hour has passed. An hour. You begin to worry. Where is she? Hmm. You imagine that Yvette has likely gone out into the woods to hunt. You don't mind waiting for her return. You continue to wait as you are willing to wait as long as it takes to complete your mission. Yeah, like it doesn't really matter. You know, like if Yvette is like gone, I'll just wait for her to get back. You know what I mean? Do 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 do. After three hours have passed, you begin to worry. Where is Yvette? You're unsure if she went hunting and got lost, or if she has found another place to live in the forest. I don't think she's coming back, Shaltier says. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I guess I have an idea. Um. You ask Shaltier if she brought magical earpieces with her. You are thinking that if you both have magical earpieces, you could split up and still be able to communicate. That way, one of you could continue to wait at the treehouse while the other went looking for your vet. I only have one pair, so you'll have to go looking for her. No way are my legs going to be as fast as yours. Chaltier takes out an earpiece that is identical to the one you are wearing and hands it to you. That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I can correct that. Chaltier takes out an earpiece and hands it to you. Let's see. Chaltier has another earpiece in her opposite ear. The two of you sync up your earpieces so that you can continue to communicate from a distance. Okay. You leave Chaltair in Yvette's treehouse 
and search the forest for your vet. You're going to stay here? Yeah, she might come back after all. I'm not sitting, oh, I'm not slitting my wrist over there being two of us and only one of her. You go look. You nod silently and take off into the forest. Let's see. Also, that's such a weird expression, what she said. Um, you jump. I guess you jump across the treetops of the massive forest trees in search of Yvette. You carefully and quietly jump from tree to tree. Your wooden legs allow you to move at an incredible speed as you sprint through the forest canopy. It's nearing nightfall, and you hope that Yvette is ahead of schedule and returning home soon. Hmm. Huh. Actually, that would be interesting. We could both be watching the treehouse. Chateaire could stay on the inside of the treehouse. I could stay on the outside. You continue looking around. The forest. Oh, wait, wait, wait. You look for tracks in the forest. You hope that you can find a trail of tracks that will lead you to Yvette's location. You spot a series of footprints that belong to Yvette. The footprints are very clear and easy to follow. You follow the trail for a few miles. Suddenly, you hear growling. Hmm. You think that the sound of growls the sound of growling might be Yvette growling at you. Um, Chaltier did mention that Yvette was a vampire. You draw your consecrated silver dagger and demand Yvette to reveal herself. All right, all right, no need to make such a fuss, a female voice says. You turn around and see a beautiful woman with long black hair and red eyes. I'm gonna, wait, hold on, what? She wears a black velvet dress and is without a doubt the most gorgeous woman you have ever seen. Wait, what? I'm gonna say, uh, you're not Yvette. Where's Yvette? And who are you? Yeah, like, that, that's kind of confusing. <laughs> the woman laughs. I'm afraid you've been had. I am Yvette. What the fuck? Hmm. Do 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 do. Yvette has red hair and blue eyes. Are you wearing a wig and contacts? <laughs> or is this just the appearance of your vampire form. Because that could be a thing. She could have like fully transformed and was like, when I transform, I have like a totally different appearance. 
Yvette pulls off her wig and you see that she has a full head of red hair. What the heck? <laughs> okay, cool. Cool, it is just Yvette. Just making sure. Okay. You attempt to use your incredibly swift wooden legs to race behind Yvette and slit her throat in a single motion. You slash at Yvette's throat, but in a moment she's disappeared. You can't beat me. I am the best of my old master. You hear her voice say from behind you. Let's see. Okay. You attempt to backflip over Yvette and to impale her skull from above with your consecrated silver dagger. Yvette disappears once again, and she slashes at your throat. You attempt to dodge, but she catches your shoulder with her nail, opening your flesh. I've had years to practice hunting humans. You're not going to beat me. Oh, no. Oh, come on. This is... It actually got kind of hype, not gonna lie. Um, I guess here are the things that I like about it. I like that it was like a very legitimate hunt. Like a lot of it is like, find a vantage point to get like a better like look at the area and like look for tracks to like try and like hunt down her precise location. Oh, you found like a shelter that might belong to her and you found like her hair and stuff. Like we had to do like a detective like breakdown to like get to her. We also like learned what her weaknesses were and we had to like go find weapons that we could use against her and we had to go to like multiple places to get the weapons and then we still had to consecrate the weapons. We did like a stakeout, we had to split up and we had like earpieces. Like it's cool, like I actually like where the story's going. One thing that I thought was really dope, um, the story randomly was like you have wooden legs and your wooden legs make you like super fast or whatever. I also think that's kind of dope. And it seemed like the fight was getting cool because it seems like Yvette's able to just kind of like disappear and reappear really quickly. Um, if you guys want to see a part two to this, I definitely would be down to do a part two. So definitely let me know. And if you guys have any safe for work scenarios with like defined goals that I can try to speed run in 30 minutes, definitely like share links to those in the comment section below or on our discord and make sure that if you guys enjoy daily ai dungeon 2 videos that you smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell and share this video with your friends if you happen to know any friends who like are super creative and come up with their own cool scenarios that i could speed run anyways thank you all once again for watching this is your host your friend your boy jet black the one and only logging out peace guys